Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's uh, topic is about insurance again. So today is another insurance video. So I'm here to clear up all the means cost measures of insurance and also the different types of insurance products. So there are many terms across uh, insurance that uh, seem very iffy. So I'll clear them up also to let you guys know uh, how it actually works like all these things. What is par funds or like what is actually waiting period all these things. Okay. Let's go! Okay, so yes, I'll start on today's topic about insurance products and insurance terms explained. Okay, so basically how uh, is insurance actually organized is basically split into uh, two big groups, which is uh, life insurance and uh, general insurance. Okay, so each of these category can be further split into personal insurance as well as commercial insurance. Okay, so first uh, we go into life. So Life and personal insurance includes things like term, uh, term, endowment or whole life, investment link plan or universal life. Okay, so these are some of the examples of uh, certain plans. Later, I'll go more into detail. This is just an overview. La. Okay, then whereas life insurance for commercial wise, commercial means like corporate. La. So they have uh, term plans only. Usually, uh, usually these plans don't carry, carry any cash value. La. So hospital and surgical, dental, etc. Okay. So general insurance also split into personal and corporate. So for general insurance wise, it's usually just term. Okay. So they are your travel insurance, your home insurance, your motor insurance, pet insurance. Okay. So these are personal general insurance. Whereas we also have the commercial general insurance where also mostly are term plans only. Okay. So marine, like work injury compensation uh, act uh, insurance, product insurance, uh, professional indemnity insurance. Okay, so if you don't know as a professional indemnity, it's like maybe you work as a professional gym coach and then you want uh, protection against like victims that will, like maybe you teach them and then something, something goes wrong and then they are injured or whatever, they try to sue you. So this professional indemnity insurance, they will help you fight the lawsuit and then uh, any damages they will pay for you, that kind of thing. So uh, subject to certain terms and conditions, like, so you need to read your contract properly. Okay, so there's tons and tons of actually general insurance that are related to commercial one. Uh. Yeah. Okay, so a professional indemnity usually uh, is under commercial rather than personal because uh, usually as a gym coach or whatever you'll be hired under a company la. so they, they are more willing to insure a company rather than a person as a uh, by itself la. yeah okay so etc etc there are tons of uh, insurance under here okay so uh, today's focus will not be on the general insurance it will be more on the life one because general insurance generally you don't need to know that much and then uh why, if you need to know, you are probably working in a company and then you are in charge of all the company insurance stuff, uh, which not many people are in that field. And also, uh, more people are more concerned about their lives uh, rather than the companies, right? Okay. So life uh, insurance potentially with cash values can also be without cash values. So life insurance is supposed to protect against uh, life-related events, which is like hospital expenses, death for like legacy planning, total permanent disability, work or severe disability income, early intermediate or major critical illnesses, personal accident, okay, living too long whereby you need to plan for your retirement income, or savings and investments where you do some wealth accumulation as well as uh, maternity plans. So all these plans right, can also be inside uh, group insurance as well. So yeah, I didn't list the examples of group insurance. So group insurance is like your company benefits. Okay? Then we go to general insurance, what are some of the examples? So just now I listed some really, and just more examples. Now. So actually personal accident and uh, critical illness fall into both uh, categories. And then uh, what are the corporate lines? Usually property, business interruption, Vika, all this. Okay? Very, very long list, like I mentioned. So why is it actually split into this life uh, versus general? Is actually because the way uh, MAS puts it, there is different licensing required for the consultants to actually sell different kind of insurance. So most of the uh, insurance agents that you see are only with the life insurance uh, um, license. Whereas uh, general insurance, usually most of these consultants don't have it. And even if they have it, they are only limited to like three 
um, insurance insurers lah. So then most people who are in general insurer insurance they will be brokers. Brokers are those who can sell for all the companies. So uh, does not really make sense for a life agent to go and do too much on general lah because you only can sell from a limited limited number of three companies. Okay. Then the brokers are the one that mainly do it with the companies. Uh. So difference between broker and agent. Uh, broker uh, usually work for you as you are the principal. Whereas the agent, agent is a, a sort of like employee of the company. So it's different principal. You know, principal versus agent. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so life insurance is governed by a life insurance association. Whereas general insurance is governed by a general insurance association. Okay. So just now I mentioned I want to explain the common life insurance terms. Okay, first one will be term insurance. What exactly is term insurance? Okay. Endowment, whole life insurance. Why I put them together later I'll explain. Uh investment link plan. Okay. Universal life. Okay, I believe uh universal life is not so commonly used lah, so you if you don't know this, uh quite common. Term insurance is uh, very common. Most people will hear this term, buy term, invest the rest, right? So what is buy term? Term is actually really just the insurance, just the protection part. So protection for a specific uh, length of time. Then for this kind of products, usually the premium rates are guaranteed. Means the rates are locked in at the age that you buy this policy. Okay. So some of these plans actually allow you to renew, like let's say you buy for a 10 year term, they allow you to renew for another 10 years after you reach the 10 year term, but usually at a higher rate. But these rates that you actually renew at, even though they show you the rates, right, it is not the actual rate. It might not be the actual rate that you renew at. So the one, they only guarantee you for a certain term. That's called, that's why they call it term insurance. Okay. So this insurance has uh, no cash value. Basically it's uh, pay as you use that. So uh, once you stop paying, it just terminates. Okay, so non-participating means it does not participate in the insurer's power fund. Later, I'll explain more about what is the insurer's power fund. Okay, that will be explained under whole life and endowment. So like I mentioned, it's potentially uh, potentially renewable at a non-guaranteed rate. Okay, so if you want to buy the cheapest insurance, definitely term is the cheapest lah. And then, uh, I mean, if you're fine with like, really, you, you know how long you will live and then it doesn't want to buy uh, for the amount of time that you, you need to live to. So it's, you can just buy term. Lah. So let's say I know for sure I'll die by 80 years old. I'll just buy a 80 years old term insurance. Lah. Yeah. Uh, another one is uh, you look at your own liabilities. Like let's say I know my liabilities will end at 65 years old. Like, my kids will all grow up by then. I don't have any liabilities to my children after that. If I go old or I cannot see eye uh, at that age, it's not it's not that big of a concern. So I'll probably buy until like 65 years old. So it depends on your needs uh, and wants. So it's not uh, completely true that uh, term insurance is the best because uh, you as yourself, you might think you know the best for yourself, but sometimes that's not true. Like you expect yourself to live only under 80 years old, but but let's say you live under 100, then how? Okay, so this one consideration when you're buying uh, term insurance. Okay, next is uh, endowment or whole life insurance. So just now I mentioned they are actually the similar or same type of uh, product. Basically, how it operates, right, is actually a product with insurance portion as well as a savings portion. Okay. So uh, if you actually buy an endowment, there will be a limited protection, okay? Because uh, endowment is meant to more grow, like grow your savings kind of thing. Whereas you buy a whole life product, usually you will get a uh, more protection amount. So more protection means there are more charges, lah. More charges which will uh, actually lower your cash value, okay? So uh, usually whole life is uh, protect until a uh, hundred years old, and it's dependent on the insurer or individual product features whether how old it terminates at. Uh. Then endowment also uh, depends, depends on the individual uh, product features. So it's quite flexible in the premium terms all this. Okay, so just now I mentioned that I will explain uh, what is participating in the insurer power fund. So basically the premiums that you pay, right, you will straight away go into this insurer power fund. And then this insurer power fund, right, 
uh, they will use it to the cash cash value. They will use it to deduct for all the charges, your insurance charges, all this. They will deduct from this part fund. Okay, so there are actually these fees and expenses which are not transparent to you. Okay, then also with a uh, non-guaranteed discretionary bonus. Okay, so uh, this bonus is declared on your cash value. It's sort of like acts as the savings portion. So area there's this uh reversionary bonus that is declared. So basically, you, you treat it like your um, yearly annual bonus. This is what they declare. But it's non-guaranteed. I mean, your boss is like your yearly performance bonus. Uh, non-guaranteed. Uh. So there's a reversionary bonus. Okay. Then, uh, other than reversionary bonus, there's also another kind of bonus called the terminal bonus. The okay, terminal bonus is only upon surrender, death, or maturity. So how this works is like your employment... They want to terminate you, right? Yeah, they give you a terminal bonus. This is the same. So also, this terminal bonus is actually non-guaranteed. Uh, so all the bonuses are actually non-guaranteed. Uh, and it's discretionary. So it means that the insurer can determine totally how much they want to give you. Okay? So a lot of people don't really like that because it's like, insurer can promise blah blah blah, but then actually all this is non-guaranteed. Uh. Yeah. So they can actually put the rates there, I will give you blah 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 blah. But actually, all these are non-guaranteed. Okay, so I guess that is what people don't really like about endowments or whole life insurance. Okay, so for the cash value, right, if it's actually our endowment, usually it will grow about 2 to 5% per year, whereas if it's a whole life plan, usually it will only grow about 1 to 3% per year because the cash value is more eroded to pay for the uh, insurance portion. Okay, so this is only at maturity, uh, if you actually surrender before maturity, nobody is going to promise you this kind of rates. Uh, and you might actually surrender at a loss. Okay? So depending on how the PAR fund performs, this is what you will get. Uh. Then how do they allocate the PAR fund, right? What is in this PAR fund? Usually, it's, uh, they will allocate, they will take your money, basically your premiums, right? They will take it and go invest. So they invest in 60% to 70% will be about bonds. And then 30 to 40% will be others. La. Others is like more high risk products, so something like stocks or like index funds or this. Okay, so basically the allocation, whatever they in invest in, is not known to you. Only the insurer knows it. Okay, even agents don't know it. Yeah, so these premium rates uh, that they charge you are uh, usually guaranteed. So the rates are locked in at the age that you buy. So usually if you buy a uh, endowment or whole life plan, right, they will tell you you need to pay for how many years. Then after that, the uh, the plan can continue to run for much longer years, then you don't need to pay for a certain number of years. Like. So let's say it can be uh, pay 5 years and then the plan run for 20 years kind of thing. Yeah. So even though like pay 5 years, right, if you don't actually pay all these 5 years, your plan will not terminate immediately. So let's say you pay for the first 2 premium but you didn't pay the last 3 premium. So your plan can actually continue to run based on the first 2 premium if there's enough value to continue running the plan. So, like I mentioned, if you stop playing, uh, the plan still will have cash value. Okay. So, like I mentioned, ca usually capital guarantee and maturity. But these plans are all non-renewable. So, let's say you live until 100 years old. You want to continue your insurance. No, you can't continue. This, there is no way to continue. They totally just terminate the plan. This is called uh, maturity. La. They will pay you the, the cash value amount and then no more, no more insurance really. Okay, next product. So people think that actually whole life is better than investment thing is actually not true. It depends on what you want. Okay. So investment link plan is uh, I think something that most people hate like. So the the cash value is uh, fully dependent on how the chosen investment fund uh, fund performs and the structure of the investment link product. So different investment link product have uh, different fees and charges. So you need to read individual uh, read all of them uh, carefully like. Okay, so depending on the type of the product features, you can have limited or full production. So, as I mentioned, all these are insurance products, so definitely there's some insurance in it. No matter what happens, all these plans, when you die, they will pay out. Okay, that's why it's called insurance products. Okay, then uh, how it works for this investment link plan. So basically, investment link plan is almost the same as a whole life insurance. It's an investment portion and also a um, term portion. So the the investment portion is used to pay for your term portion. 
when you actually pay for this investment link plan. Okay. So like I mentioned, regular premiums uh, or top-ups to this uh, investment link plan goes into the funds, uh, the, all the index funds after the premium charges. If you stop paying for the plan, uh, the plan will go into a premium holiday and still has cash value. Okay. So benefit charges, uh, aka the protection charges, which is the insurance portion, lah, is not guaranteed and could be additional premium paying. Then, and then you can you actually have to pay more premium and top up more premium if the benefit charges actually change. Lah. Whereas for whole life or term insurance, right, the premium charges are actually guaranteed most of the time, lah, depending on the actual product. So. If let's say, uh, what do I mean by guarantee or not guarantee? It's like, let's say um, currently the mortality rates of Singaporeans are by 75 years old, most of them are really passed on. Uh. Whereas like 10 years later, maybe uh, we increase the, the mortality rate somehow drop. Uh, uh, I mean increase means like people are dying at a younger age. So if people are dying at a younger age, right, they might increase the premium charges because you have a higher chance of dying. So if they increase the premium charges, like last time, if you are 30 years old, you still pay $50. But now because of this increased mortality rate, right? Because you are 30 years old, you have to pay maybe uh, $80, which is more. Like, so they increase the benefit charges at all the certain ages. So it's not a uh, guarantee. And then you could be have, have to top up the premiums. Like, let's say they promise you the premiums is actually $3,000 a year. And then because of this uh, guarantee, the premium switch change, you need to maybe top up $1,000 more a year for the premiums. Uh, another thing is that these protection charges, right, are actually uh, not locked in at the current age that you buy the investment plan. Uh, such that, like, let's say uh, 28 years old is paying, it's something like your hospital plan. Even though you buy at 28 years old, right, uh, they will still, by the time you reach 60 years old, they will still charge you the 60 years old rate, not charge you the 28 years old rate. So it doesn't lock in the premiums at your age. That's the bad thing about investment link plans. Usually it comes with uh, automatic fund switching, rebalancing, very flexible. Very flexible in the sense that you can change your insured or premium amount subject to the minimum uh, premium amount for the plan. And then a uh, partial withdrawal is allowed after a certain period. So let's say you uh, choose the maximum amount you can do for this investment link plan. Then uh, somehow the fund performs extremely well and then charges on the plan is so insignificant that you have a huge amount for withdrawal. So you can do a half amount withdrawal after a certain period without any charges. Okay. There's also a choice of a fund from the insurance list of available funds. So you can choose from the individual insurers. Some, however, there is some high net worth products, right, that do not allow for fund choice. Uh. So you need to take note. So these investment link plans are non-renewable and it lapses if the investment value is insufficient to support the fees and charges. So like I mentioned, if the fees and charges change, right, and then uh, sometimes your investment don't grow so well, there's a high chance of your coverage losing your coverage even if your premiums are paid every year. So let's say they tell you 3000 a year and you don't do the top up of uh, 1000 extra per year, your plan has a high chance of lapsing because you won't get the um, coverage all the way until the age you're supposed to get. Okay? Okay? However, its uh, charges and bonuses are more transparent compared to a life plan. Okay? So what are the common uh, fees and charges associated with ILPs? So the mandatory ones are premium charges. So premium charges is something like you invest $3,000. For the first year, maybe they will only put in uh, $1,000 of this $3,000 into the fund. So the premium charge is maybe 66%. So it could be any percent. Like, so you need to go and check what are the premium charges. So how, how much after the premium charge will go inside the, the uh, fund. Okay. And one is policy charges, so it's uh, something like uh, admin charges for running the policy. So usually for those funds, right, like let's say you buy from uh, Manulife. Manulife is not the one wholly doing the investments for you. Usually they will hire another fund manager to, like maybe BlackRock to manage it for you. So uh, these are the policy charges because they have to do the admin for you to find all these people, right? Okay. 
so let's say they like we saying menu life hire black blackrock so blackrock help you manage this fund right blackrock also want to get charges right so there's also a fund management charge at the blackrock side okay and what is the benefit charges since now we went through so benefit charges equal to the protection charges okay however this benefit charges is not always they will be charged so it determines uh you need to see whether your cash value is actually more than your insured amount so if your insured amount is always less than your cash value right then you will be charged these uh, benefit charges if you actually pay the plan according to what they ask you to pay most likely you only need to pay all these mandatory charges however there are some uh optional charges if you fall into financial difficulties you have to bear these optional charges okay so what are these uh, optional charges usually premium holiday so between like maybe certain normal years you cannot go on a uh, premium holiday you need to every year pay your premiums before the certain period then another one is a uh, partial or full surrender so usually within a certain period you cannot do partial or full surrender but after that it's a uh, very flexible lah. okay so what's the difference between this and actually the whole life plan? Whole life plan, you cannot go on a premium holiday. You need to pay all your premiums on time. So let's say you miss a certain premium, right? Your premium will actually go into, I mean, your whole life plan will actually go into this thing called a automatic policy loan. And then, right, you need to pay back all the previous premiums you didn't pay. Plus also you need to top up this uh, loan that you actually took from the plan. Yeah, so it's uh, much more that you have to pay back to get the whole plan running again. Whereas if the investment link plan is already a certain number of years and there's no premium holiday charge, right? You can just continue start playing premium again and uh, your policy value is not really like affected by this uh, non-payment in between. Okay? And then for whole life plan, you can't do a partial or full surrender. Okay, you can do a full surrender for whole life plan. Means uh totally you take out everything lah. but you can't really do a flexible full, uh, flexible partial surrender lah. usually whole life plan they will allow you to withdraw the bonuses but they don't allow you to like say we are not withdraw two thousand dollars that one not allowed lah, for whole life plan whereas for the investment link plan if you really want to withdraw two thousand dollars usually in uh, multiples of thousands lah, they will allow it okay so all these have uh, no charge after a certain period of time Depends like depends on your actual uh, product. Not every product have no charge. Yeah Okay, lastly we come to the uh, most uh, Misunderstood product which is a uh, universal life Okay, so just now I went through the three products right one is uh, only insurance that is insurance plus savings, but uh, more bond related whereas this one is insurance plus investments only Okay, investments only meaning all, all the high risk investments lah. Okay, depending on the fun, uh, fun type you choose. Then the last product is actually this universal life product. So universal life uh, is also like an investment, but just that all the underlying assets is only bonds. Okay, so targeted to achieve about, uh, I think 1.5% minimally to about, percent yeah so the target to achieve this kind of returns for you lah. usually protects uh, only against death terminal illness and used by the high net worth for legacy planning so usually how this works right is like someone already pretty old like uh, 60 plus years old now got uh, maybe 5 million assets then they want to leave behind uh, 5 million 5 million each for each kid lah. But he only got 5 million left to give, uh, how do you split to each kid 5 million each? So how it works right is maybe he take 2 million of this 5 million to go and buy a 10 million insurance. So he buy a 10 million insurance, uh, then he can leave 5 million each for each kid. Right? Then the remaining 3 million he still can spend. Okay, I think that's uh, a bit too cheap for universal life. So maybe we take 4 million to go and buy this uh, 10 million insurance possible. Uh, then the remaining 1 million he still can spend. And then... Uh, the, when he died, the 10 million, the wealth already multiplied for his kids. Ma. Yeah, so that's how the universal life works. La. Usually it's a single premium, okay, or limited premium payment, la, usually less than 5. So it has a uh, cash value, will not terminate immediately just because a uh, premium payment is missed. 
so all these different products are actually just basically term insurance with some form of investment, just different form of investment. Okay. And then uh it can't theirs, theirs is not called like cash value, we call it a net accumulation value with a minimum guaranteed crediting rate every year. So I mentioned the even if the bonds performance is super super bad, right? They will guarantee you a certain percentage kind of thing. Okay. Then uh, usually it's uh, very flexible, able to increase or reduce the current insured amount, subject to a minimum insured amount. So it's something like investment link plan, just that it's uh, focus is on bonds instead of uh, investments. Then can be used as an asset mortgage when taking out a loan. Okay, so it's a uh, part of your asset pool. And then if the accumulation value is insufficient to support the fees and charges, a universal life plan can actually lapse. So uh, important to get a universal life plan with a good insurer to ensure they can actually support the percentage of returns that they promise you. Lah. So yeah. Okay, so uh, for universal life plan, the bonuses and fees and charges is also very transparent. So it's very similar to investment link plans. And then what are the mandatory charges? Usually you have a premium charge, as I mentioned, administration charge, insurance risk charge. So it's the same as a uh, Investment link plan totally the same, just that the underlying product rather than uh, stocks, I mean stocks and bonds mix, you have uh, just a uh, bonds, no mix. Okay. Optional uh, charges are uh, partial or full surrender. Okay. So, universal life, like I mentioned, really most common is just a single premium payment. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Now we move on to the other important terminologies. Okay. First thing uh, is rider. Rider, okay, so everyone always say, like, when I buy a term plan, usually what, what is this term plan? So a term plan, right, most term plans that you buy actually only cover death. Then you want to cover other things other than death, right? You need to add a rider. So rider is a TPD rider or critical illness rider or this. Okay, so what's the main point of the rider? Is to improve the coverage in certain other areas. And then a rider cannot exist without the main plan okay so that's why uh i think very funny question and most people ask me oh can my rider continue running if i terminate my main plan the answer is no one uh. no rider can continue running if you terminate your main plan okay yeah another one is uh you will see very commonly in your policy contract is this thing called exclusions okay so what exclusions means are uh, expressly they do not allow this kind of claim uh. One kind of common exclusion is uh, for death, right? Is uh, suicide within the first year. So after the first year, if you actually go in suicide, the death plan will actually be out. Okay? So please read this list of exclusions. It's very important to ensure that uh, if anything happens, you don't fall within this list of exclusions. Okay? So other than exclusions, there's another uh, term called the extensions. So some things may not be expressly say that uh, they cover. But then they want to actually cover you, then they add it into this list called the extensions. Okay, so for example, when will these extensions be useful, right? It's something like the accident plan. So let's say accident plan, usually what's the definition of accident? Accident would need to be a violent injury kind of thing. Like. So if let's say I actually um, have dengue fever, but most accident plans somehow cover dengue fever. How, how is this covered? It's covered through the extensions. Okay. So that technically there's nothing uh, accidental about getting dengue fever, but they cover it. It's usually under extensions. So you need to read each and every accident plan whether your extensions are actually covered. Okay? So any exclusions usually on CI or like uh accident plans, right, will be pre-existing illness. La. Okay. So let me explain what's the definition of pre-existing illness. Okay. One is uh, actually you are already diagnosed in the hospital. So uh, let's say I buy the plan on, I buy the plan today. And then yesterday I went to see the doctor. Doctor already told me I I got this pro this heart problem or whatever. Lah. So this might, maybe 10 years later, then I diagnosed with a heart attack or whatever. But because the doctor tell me like yesterday, I already have this heart problem. This heart attack that I get, right, is actually could be a pre-existing illness. Okay, and then other things about pre-existing illness, 
uh, can be things like, let's say today I buy a plan, and then 10 days down the road, I go and see the doctor, and the doctor, uh, now I go and tell the doctor that, actually I have this illness, maybe, maybe I say my stomach ache, uh, I got stomach ache, I got this stomach ache for, for a very long time already, maybe a few years already. Then, obviously, the doctor will write it down that I have stomach ache for a few years, and I, I just bought the insurance. Uh. So, actually, this stomach ache, right, is already a pre-existing illness. So, always be careful about what you say to the doctor. And then, uh, the definition of pre-existing illness is uh, very, like, say, in the gray area. Uh. So, you need to uh, manage it well. And then, uh, please discuss with your uh, advisor on this. Uh. Another important term is actually the waiting period. Okay? Waiting period uh, is uh, usually applicable to only critical illness or illness related uh, insurance. So why is waiting period? So if anything is actually diagnosed during this uh, waiting period, like let's say I buy the insurance today and then 90 days from today is the waiting period, anything diagnosed within this 90 days right, does not count as uh, illness that to be admitted as a critical illness claim la. yeah so basically during these 90 days right you have to be very very careful not to go to the doctor not to get anything diagnosed yeah okay so after waiting period is over so after let me today i buy insurance and 90 days later i go and see the doctor i go and see the doctor the doctor sign tell me i got stomach cancer then this stomach cancer right i need to survive at least for certain number of period before I can get my uh, uh, critical illness payout. So there's also a survival period. There's a survival period of uh, 7 days. So if you don't actually survive for 7 days, right, the critical illness will not pay out. They will only pay out the death payout. They will skip the critical illness payout. So some people, right, have a separate critical illness plan compared to their death plan. So their death plan, right, only the death plan will pay out. The critical illness plan will not pay out if they don't survive within 7 days. So if you buy your insurance early, right, you can always go and see the doctor as early as possible to get your critical illness payout that is different from your uh, death payout. Okay, so survival so period very important, usually 7 days, so 1 week. La. So uh, recently, I have a friend's uncle who passed on uh, in 1 week. La. So I don't know where he uh, successfully survived the 7 days waiting period, but he's really died within 1 week. So. It's a iffy, it's a in the gray area whether they will actually pay out this critical illness. La. Yeah. So uh, try to survive for at least 8 days, la, you know. So it won't be like in the gray area. Okay, so just now I mentioned about reversionary bonus and the terminal bonus. So I explained already, yearly is your yearly performance bonus. And terminal bonus is uh, when you actually want to terminate the insurance contract. It's terminal, uh, terminal bonus. Okay. Okay, so some uh, myths or truth. So uh, very common is uh, one should always buy term and invest the rest. So uh, I think this has already been dispelled in my explanations of the different product types. So different product types will suit different people. La. Like investment link plan, if you really don't know how to invest, right? Maybe you want to go with an investment link plan. Uh, it will help you. Uh, like basically your advisor will help you choose the funds and then you don't need to really monitor it and then it's a you know more convenient way of uh, lumping both together la. but most of the time right uh, actually investment link plans are not very suitable for only coverage it's more suitable for people who uh, prioritize investments more la. yeah so it depends on individual needs and then whether you need the flexibility or not so if you don't need the flexibility uh, always go for non non investment link plans uh. yeah so it depends on individual situations uh all ilps are bad uh depends la because uh, some ilps have very very little insurance components so technically if there is very little insurance components and the charges are quite little and if the fund is actually a very good performing fund right the ilp can actually be much better than you doing your own individual investment so it's a, uh, I think it's a uh, half half kind of thing lah, yeah. Okay, so another uh, common myth is uh, I'm so young and I'm single, I can always buy insurance later when I have a family. Okay, uh, always buy insurance later. That's a question mark lah. So depends on whether you are in good health, 
at that point of time and whether you can buy insurance lot. So no good health, uh, very hard for you buy insurance lot. Yeah. So uh, another misconception is uh, if I have diabetes or already a uh, illness diagnosed, you can't buy insurance at all. It's not true. So there are some insurance available. You need to check with your advisor. Only the rich, the very rich or the very poor need insurance. Uh, it's not true lah. Everyone needs insurance lah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, last topic I want to go through is uh, let's say I have both my company insurance and my personal insurance. Which one should I claim? If I should claim both, which one should be first lah? Okay. So for hospitalization and uh, surgery insurance, usually. If you claim from your personal plan, you still have this thing called the co coinsurance and the deductible. So most people will think that oh, since personal insurance got coinsurance and deductible, I should only claim from the company side, right? But nope, that's not true. Depends. Okay, so let's say you bought a personal plan that is private, and then your company plan only covers government hospital. So if you're go going to a government hospital. You can only claim from a company. Whereas if you are going from uh, to a private hospital, your company plan does not fully cover you, uh, so you also need to claim from your personal insurance. So it really depends on the situation. So always need to sit down and ask about what's your personal insurance, what's the company insurance, so you can compare and then which one to claim first. Okay. So usually we'll need to claim from both, lah. The reason why I claim from both is because personal insurance, the pre and post hospitalization part, right? Is usually longer than a company one. Company one usually only ninety days. Okay, so if you need to claim from both, which one should you claim first? You should claim the personal one first. Is because uh, when you claim the personal insurance, you need the hospital to do this thing called the e filing. So this e filing can only be done by hospital. It cannot be done by agent. It cannot be done by you. It can only be done by hospital. Okay, so only uh, when you are doing uh, the claims at the hospital, claim from the personal one first. Okay, so after that, the personal one paid out already. You have this remaining. If you buy rider, you need have remaining co insurance lah. Then co insurance you can claim from the company insurance. So in this way, you get fully insured for all your hospital and surgery expenses. Okay. Lastly, we have this. Uh, oh, so not lastly. Secondly, we have this. Uh, death or TPD claims. So death or TPD claims. Uh, you should always claim both. Because uh, you will get a lump sum payout from both sides. Okay, so it's not over insurance if you buy two, or buy like your company buy for you and you buy yourself. It's not over insurance because both will pay out. But you can take your company one. Whether you should take your company one into consideration when planning for your own personal one, I don't really think so because if you actually quit your company, then you need to only rely on your own, right? What happens in between when you change company? Yeah. Critical illness so depends lah. Usually both. Okay, usually it's a claim personal first. Why? Why claim personal first? Usually for critical illness, right? If uh insured by the company, is uh, is only for major critical illness. So let's say I only get a early kind of cancer. Early kind of cancer, I can only claim for my own one. Right? I cannot claim for my company one. Company one must project uh progress to a major stage before I can actually claim. Okay. So another kind is like some people very funny one. Right? Even they buy like multiple critical illness plan, right? But they only want to claim from one side first because they cannot control their spending. So let's say uh, I get cancer now. I don't. I only want to claim from a uh, company A's uh, um critical illness plan. Then maybe when I get diagnosed with a second one, I can claim a second time. So I like speed up my spending lah. So it depends on you. For me, uh, I tell you personally, I just go and claim both straight away. Cause I want more money now. Right? Yeah, so basically, usually is claim a uh, personal first, and usually when you claim the personal insurance already, right, they will allow you to have this thing called the premium waiver. So if there's a multiple payout plan, right, they will waive all future premiums, and you still covered for future critical illness. Whereas if it's a single critical illness plan, you totally need to stop paying premium. Right? You don't need to pay premium anymore. Yeah. Okay. Next is uh, accident plan. Accident plan uh depends. So usually, if it's a accident relating to a reimbursement, right? Uh, 
if it's an accident, your company both buy this reimbursement plans for you, right? You can only claim for one side. You cannot double claim. So one receipt can only claim once. Okay? Whereas it depends if it's the accident that is uh, very serious, like 断手断脚, or you, the person actually passed away or get permanently disabled, lose certain parts of the body. So this kind of accident plans you can claim from both sides. Okay? Maternity. So maternity, it depends. Uh, if it's a normal childbirth, usually only can claim from company. La. Because uh, most maternity plans that are personal one, they don't allow you to claim for the normal childbirth. They only allow you to claim for like uh, any pregnancy complications. Okay, so for complications, you can claim from both. So what's the difference between maternity plans for company and maternity plans for personal? Maternity plans for uh, company, right? Usually it's uh, on a reimbursement basis. So how much you incur is the maximum of what you can claim. Okay. Also depend on your company limits, lah. Okay. Whereas for personal maternity plans, right? Usually it's on a lump sum payout basis. So let's say I get gestational diabetes. Uh, when I have a baby, they will just tell me, oh, I I'm insured for five k. So I buy, I only buy five k, right? They pay out the five k and then the, that's the end of it, lah. Whereas uh, maternity plans for company is different. It's on a reimbursement basis. So they are both on different basis. Yeah. So if any complications, you can claim from both. Lah. So the hospital fees, I will claim from my company side. And then I'll get a lump sum payout for any complications. Okay. Then also if uh, anything happens to your child, that one is not covered under company maternity. That one need to be by your own personal, uh, uh, personal maternity plans. Lah. Okay, so I mentioned everyone's financial situations and needs are different. So please stop using your friend's portfolio as your own portfolio. It's not going to work for you. Yeah. Okay, so these are some of the questions you need to ask yourself before you decide on which product type to go with. So for the very first question, do you actually know exactly what is your life plan? When, when exactly are you going to have kids? And then when exactly your liabilities will end? If you are really not quite sure right then maybe having a term plan that you cannot actually extend might actually be a bad thing lah. so uh, you need to really consider the other solutions okay so depends question one ask yourself and then also take a look at who are your dependents and at what age do you need to plan this protection till lah. so let's say uh, if you actually plan to have kids but later, last minute you actually do not even have kids then at even at old age right when you get critical illness you still need money to support yourself right you need extra money to support yourself right so if you only get critical illness coverage until you are 65 years old then after that if you develop cancer at 70 years old are you able to support yourself when you're single and then you have no dependents to help you so all these are uh, various questions you should ask yourself and then uh so if you are considering between a uh, really you you know that you won't be getting a term plan right maybe you are deciding between a whole life plan and an investment link plan so maybe one question to ask yourself is also whether do you actually invest on your own do you have the knowledge and the discipline to invest on your own if you don't then maybe getting an investment link plan might be better for you so it all depends on individual needs okay so one more question you ask yourself i mean you get a term plan, there definitely you won't get any money back if at the end of the term plan you don't uh, actually get any of the specified uh, conditions which is either death, TPD or critical illness, right? So do you want to have this money back if nothing happens to you during the insurance period? I know like most people, they think that go for term plans is the cheapest so why should I even be considering others? So just one other perspective for the richer people right usually if the person is more well off the person will be not thinking about this they will be thinking about their capital preservation so they say i put into this amount in this plan i need to get back at least how much before i think this plan is worth it so usually from the high net worth perspective uh, they don't really like term plans so if you if you see from their point of view i also can understand why so let's say i'm doing actually a trade so I'm doing a trade, I want to hatch the trade, right? Then I want to ensure that I at least get my money back. So even if the returns is sucky, at least I get my money back, right? So it depends like, whether you actually have this kind of mindset. Do you really want to get your money back? If you want to get your money back, you need to start looking at actually 
whole life plans or universal life plans. Lah. Yeah. And also, do you prefer to pay uh, more premiums early or you think it's uh, better to spread out these regular premiums throughout the policy term? Okay. So, as you know, uh, term plans are pay as you use. Lah. So, these are term plans pay, uh, spreading out your policy term. So, let's say your current cash flow is very tight. You can only afford term plans. So, yeah, go ahead, buy the term plans now. So, let's say five years down the road, your cash flow improves greatly. And then, uh, you can start considering other plans. Lah. So, you can uh, terminate your, your term plan and then uh, buy other plans. Okay? Or you can actually convert your term plans into a life plan or convert into an ILP. Yeah, so all these are potential considerations uh, for people before you actually decide on your own product type. Okay? So like I mentioned for term plans as a comparison, it's the cheapest, but it's not really the cheapest if you really need it for a long period of time. Okay, so what I mean by it's not really cheapest if you need a long period of time. So let's say if I buy a term plan from now until 100 years old. Okay, so the premiums I pay, right, might maybe be... Okay, so if I'm currently 28, I need a term plan until I'm 100 years old. So I will need to pay 72 years of premium. And let's say the premiums is really quite cheap, like maybe 1,800. To make it simple, you just make it 2,000. Like. So 2,000, I pay for 72 years. Then I pay until 100, I'm 148,000, right? By then I'm 100 plus years old, I totally have no coverage already. I don't even get any money back. I pay 148,000 for nothing. Whereas maybe if I buy a whole life plan, maybe I pay $5,000 for 15 years. $5,000 for 15 years, only 45k. It's actually cheaper than a term plan. So why should I be buying a term plan if I intend to live beyond 100 years old? Right? So no one knows when you will live until. So sometimes maybe whole life plan might be more suitable for you. So if you really want to go for the cheapest, you need to see which age you want to go. You want to be insured until. If you are insured until uh, maybe 65, yeah, term plan is definitely the cheapest. So you need to just really look at your own self. Lah, whether... Uh, what age you need it until, okay? Uh, okay, so like I mentioned, whole life plan is limited payment, so heavier cash flow at the start. Investment link plan is uh, more flexible, so uh, it's flexible in the sense that you can go on premium holiday, but <laughs> might have the premium holiday charges, like, so you need to see for yourself, okay? Then uh, lastly is uh, if you're super duper rich, go for universal life plans, okay? So all these have cash value and then you can be surrendered at any time if you encounter a financial difficulty, even though you might be high net worth now, okay? So uh, in terms of cash value, term plans have no cash value. Whole life, like I mentioned just now, have a uh, cash value, but it's not very significant. So it's a mix of uh, bonds and assets, okay? Investment link plan, uh, potentially much more cash value depending on what you invest in. Yeah, then uh, as I said, universal life plan also has cash value, but uh, yeah, main investment uh product is bonds. So you might see why whole life is actually uh less than whole life is actually the cash value is less than universal life. The fact is that when you do the premium calculation, right, because they do a single premium, so they have more time to accumulate the cash value. So that's why a uh, universal life plan actually have. A bit more cash value compared to whole life lah. yeah and then uh, in terms of you if you need the guaranteed coverage throughout your plan's lifetime right like uh, let's say whole life's 100 term also 100 and then investment link all 100 lah. assuming all is uh, supposed to expire at 100 years old so only term and whole life can give you guaranteed coverage until 100 years old so in terms of like let's say the investment link plan is supposed to mature only at 100 right but let's say the investment perform until so shitty until it cannot even last only 100, 100 years old then yeah lah, you will lapse lah. okay or admittedly some uh, investment link plans also have this thing called the no lapse privilege so this no lapse privilege will be for a certain number of years so for this certain number of years if the actually the plan goes to zero you will still be insured with the uh, cash value uh, with the uh, sum assured lah. but this number of years is definitely not enough to exist till your policy's uh, maturity date so you will always need to ma uh, monitor your investment link product, the policy value to make sure it has enough uh, value to actually support all the charges. Lah. Yeah. Same for universal life. Okay, these two are the same. Okay, so uh, if you actually generate this thing called the policy illustration, right, you will get to see like at certain age, the universal life plan will also drop off if they go for maximum charges and uh, minimum crediting rates. Okay, so 
Uh, but it's quite unlikely that they ever have all the way minimum crediting rates and also all maximum charges. Lah. So, but what you need to know is there is a possibility that you won't get guaranteed coverage, coverage till the policy maturity age. Okay? So what are the types of coverage you can get for all the different types of uh, products? So uh, for universal life, it's uh, very limited, only death and terminal illness usually. Uh, I mean, maybe there are new uh, innovations, some insurer might have others, but usually it's just these two. Okay? Whole life, investment link have a ton of different um, coverage, but usually revolve mainly over death, TPD, critical illness, or some kind of special uh, critical illness or kind of thing. Okay? Term is the most flexible one. You can have any kind of coverage, hospital expenses, hospital income, death, TPD, CI, disability income, and really just so much more. Lah. Yeah. yeah, so I understand there's lots of insurance out there and it's super confusing to try and uh, understand all of them. And I hope throughout this video, uh, I have shared about the different types of insurance and which you should get and also what are the areas of consideration when getting what you should get. Lah. For the different protection areas, I have already covered them in another separate video. I'll put the link down below. So it's like uh, different areas of protection for death, uh, TPD, CI. All this is explained in another video. So this one is all about like product types, uh, whether it's a uh, ILP or it's a life plan or it's a term plan or universal life. Like, yeah. Okay, lastly, I come to the end. Any other questions, please uh, leave your comments down below. Uh, please don't any, please don't leave like product specific questions like, do you think many life products is good? This kind of question uh, I won't be answering. You can ask like more generic question. What does this certain term mean? Then I can help you answer. Okay, so if this has really helped you, uh, please help to uh, like, subscribe and share.